The video you're about to watch is from one of our spurt schools. Enjoy and please subscribe. Thank you. Father, tonight a whole new dimension will open up for everyone in this room. Father, I pray, Lord, to, to, for us to step into it, for us to begin to understand it, that your sweet, precious Holy Spirit will open up that soulish part of us, Father, that wants to reject what we don't know, that wants to reject that which we don't understand. So, Father, tonight I ask that as we come out of the kingdom of heaven into the kingdom of earth, that you will begin to open our hearts, open up every dimension for us to begin to understand and have revelation of what's about to be taught, that your heart will overshadow everyone in this room, Father God, will begin to understand what the desire of your hearts are, the desire of and the passion that you have for the ecclesia of the church, Father, how you want your sons and your daughters to grow and mature and become what you're destined for each individual to be. Lord, as we begin to learn, as we begin to in, in, engage with you at a level that we never thought possible, as we begin to see you, touch you, walk with you and eat it, eat of the fruit, go into different kingdoms, do, go into the courts and begin to understand that your desire for us is to co-heir, to literally work with you, to operate in the kingdom of heaven with you and to legislate things into the earth, to understand what it means to literally have given all that you are over to Yahweh in its full capacity. Father, I pray tonight that your spirit of revelation will just come and hover over everyone in this room, that your sweet presence will just rest in and, and over everyone, Lord, as, as, as you bring your Holy Spirit to a place where it will literally overshadow everyone to a full capacity. Father, we worship you, we glorify you, we magnify you. Jesus, you are Lord. You are the one that we have given every dimension of our lives over to. And I pray, Father, that we will begin to work and operate out of that place where we live and move and have our being in you, where we are clothed in the light of Yeshua that operates and shifts us into the dimension that, that you want us to live out of the kingdom of heaven. And from that covering that Yeshua operates or gives, we begin to understand what it means to live a life consumed with Yeshua. Everything we do, everything that we operate with is to bring glory to the King, to bring alignment to the earth and to be sons and daughters in the house of the Father. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and tonight I ask that you'll open up the hearts of your people and align us with revelation. We love you, you're a majestic, awesome, beautiful King, and we thank you. Amen. Maybe switch the lights on. Thank you. A little bit more. Oh, is it just taking a while? We can light it up. It's fine. Okay. How you guys doing? <laughs> Everyone awake? Let me ask that rather. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm excited. I uh, I want to just thank you and honor um, Heather and Darren and um, Pastor Howard for allowing me to use this venue. And I want to make this very clear to you from the very beginning. You are a powerful being. How many of you know that? Amen. You're a powerful being. You're a son of the Most High. You can hold on to or you can reject whatever you want. There's no obligation in any way, fashion, or form for you to receive anything I teach. <clears throat> But the idea behind this is that you, that you understand that you don't sit here to prove me wrong. You sit here to prove me right. Because your spirit's going to go, yes, I want it. And your soul's going to go, well, I don't know, where's that in the word? I have to say that right, word. <laughs> I, love, I love what I do. I love you. I love you more than what you can even begin to fathom or understand. It is un and unnatural for me to love a people that I don't know or haven't met the way that I love you. Um, and the reason I do is because the Father has given me a mantle of love. It is a dimension of His presence that's on me and that I carry. It gives me the ability to love people that I don't know with a love that's unconditional. And I want you to know that. And the reason I do this is not for the offering that comes afterwards. It is because I want to teach you how to have a deeper, more intimate relationship with Yahweh. He is an awesome, majestic, beautiful God. And I love the church. And it's going to sound over the next couple of months that I come against the church. I come against the church system. I don't like the church system. I love the ecclesia. Now, church and ecclesia is the same thing. It's the same meaning. But the ecclesia, and what I mean when I say ecclesia, is the representation of the body of Christ that operates under the shadow of the Most High. That does not do things according to what man has instituted, according to what man wants. 
the ecclesia is a group, a company of people that will live out of the heartbeat of Yahweh, that will operate in his kingdom and operate from there. I'm going to do things and say things differently. I'm going to turn in my Bible. Now, if you don't think or believe that my Bible is the same as yours, that's your problem. Okay? I don't want you to try and page around in the Bible trying to find the scripture. You can if you want to, but it's going to frustrate you. Because I'm going to start reading, and you're not going to be there yet, and then you're going to miss what I'm saying. Okay, so my Bible is the same as yours. Now, you can believe that or not, but it's true, it is. And of course, this is how it's going to be, and you're not going to like it. I'm not going to quote scripture all the time. I'm not a pastor of a church. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, my God. Now, I used to be, and I was a nightmare. I am not a pastor. Try, ask anybody that was in my con congregation. It's just... The mic is, on. is it not working? Uh, you might press, press it. I did. Yeah, I did. How did I do that? I think it was flashing right. There we go. Can I go? Yeah, it's, it's flashing. It, does it mean anything when it's flashing? No, it's okay. It's okay? So how did I press it? Oh. Okay, let me turn it like that, then I can't press it. Okay, and everybody hear me again now? What was I saying? That you're thankful that you're not a pastor. Okay, yeah, okay, thank you, Jesus. I can't say that enough. But, you know, my understanding of church was that I, if I want to be in ministry, I have to be a pastor. And so that's what I studied to be. That's what I became. And when I became a pastor, I realized, oh, MG, this is not what I'm called to do. You know, when um, one person comes up, uh -oh. I didn't touch it. Okay, I'm just going to use the other one. It could be a trash That's okay. That's okay. It doesn't matter. No, I don't mind. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. I don't even need a mic. I don't think so. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay, so I, I realized very early in ministry that I'm not called to be a pastor. And of course, those that was in my ministry realized that I'm not a pastor. You know, I get a call at 3 o'clock in the morning, Pastor, I need you to come pray for me. No. <laughs> Forget about it. That's the uppy. That didn't work. I remember, remember getting a call from a lady, one of our leaders in the church, and she says, uh, you need to come pray right now. My, my brother slipped in the bath. He's got an aneurysm in his brain, and he's going to die. And I said, well, then he's not going anywhere, is he? She did not like that very much. <laughs> so I said, well, I'm not coming right now. If he's going to die, then he is going to die, then we can raise him from the dead. But I'm not coming right now. It's about an hour's drive. I'm with my family in bed. It ain't happening. So he was brain dead, and he did, he did kind of die. You know, when you're brain dead, you're dead. And so when I got there the next day, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, everybody already came from all the different places to say goodbye to him. His name was Les. And the Lord directed me to go into the, into the room, into the ICU. And I laid my hands on him. I remember his wife looking at me all strange. Who are you? I had a short sleeve on, uh, like a vest, a wife beater. Help me, Jesus. Um, <laughs> I just came from the gym, I had shorts on, I have tattoos on both sides of my arms, um, I've got some on my legs, and so I walk into this place, and of course I look like a little gangster, um, I'm 300 pounds, mostly McDonald's, uh, mostly uh, muscle, a little bit of McDonald's on the side, help me, and uh, <laughs> I walk in there, and she's all freaked out, everyone thinks I'm crazy, and I lay my hands on him, and I just pray a quick normal prayer, and I leave. And uh, at 7 o'clock that day, it was 5 o'clock, at 7 o'clock, the doctor came in to greet him, because that's apparently what you have to do, even though he's brain dead. And he <laughs> sits up and says, good evening, doctor. Wow. I mean, the doctor was such, got such a fright, he threw his files in the air and ran out. <laughs> Les, after about three weeks, was completely healed, Amen. went back home, went through some rehab, but he was completely healed. Amen. But I wasn't, I wasn't a good pastor. Until my father, my spiritual father, came in and said, listen, um, you're not a pastor. I'm like, really? <laughs> yes, I'm not a pastor. He aligned me as the apostolic voice for that ministry, and that's kind of where everything started for me. Um, I need you to understand that what I'm going to teach you is not going to align with what you have been taught. It does not mean that what you have been taught is wrong. How many of you understand, if I teach you algebra, and you have an understanding of math, it's just a different dimension of the truth. Yeah. Okay? So I need you to understand that. So I'm not going to teach you one plus one. 
You might want that, but that's not my problem. That's your problem. I'm not going to spoon feed you. I am not a mother. That's what a pastor does. A pastor, mother. Uh, an apostle, fathers. A father is the one that says, um, after you almost drowned, oh, so you can't swim. <laughs> the mother is the one that jumps in and grabs the child. Oh my God, you almost died. Go on Facebook and say, please pray for my child. <laughs> no, father is just different. <laughs> He doesn't spoon, spoon speed. He doesn't spoon feed anybody. Most fathers. And so I don't want to spoon feed you. I don't want you to read scriptures and tell you, well, this is where you can go find it. If you want to know where it is, I'm going to be speaking scripture. Because that's what I've been doing for the last 23 years. Studying, meditating on the scriptures. And I know the scriptures, but I don't want to quote them for you. Because that's what we used to. That's what we want. We want the takeaway bits. Let me tell you, spirit school is all about works. Then they go, doesn't the Bible say that your good works is like filthy rags before men? Yes, but James, now what I love about James is that James is the brother of Jesus. Now let me tell you something. Jesus has to be the son of God for his brother to believe it. Right. But if my brother had to say, oh, I'm the son of God, I was going to laugh until I die. Because it just, I mean, that's just ridiculous, right? But obviously, Yeshua lived the life to such an extent that his brother believed it. And so when James writes that um, faith without works is dead, I listen to him. Because what we need to do in this class is you need to take what I've given you back home. And you have to engage into it. This is not knowledge. If someone didn't teach me this stuff, I listened to my mentors as they mentored me. But after I got the info, I went and engaged into it for it to become real to me. And that's the key to this. You have to engage into it. You have to make time in your day to engage, to go into what I have taught you. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do tonight is I'm going to try and kind of just open up the understanding of the three kingdoms. Now, there's more than three kingdoms, but it's the three basic kingdoms. It's the kingdom of earth, the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of heaven. And have an understanding of how they operate and how you need to know where you need to operate from to have the dominion and authority that he's given you as a son, uh, as a daughter of the Most High. I'm going to uh, Isaiah quickly. I um, want to just read that scripture so we can have an understanding of what will happen in the last days. And the reason the Father kind of wants us to know where we're at. The Ecclesia is not the same. Now, I'm sure you guys know that there was an alignment of the stars and planets on the 23rd of August last year. Now, if you understand how that works in the spirit, it was the coming to an end of an age. Now we're in a new age, not the religion. Don't look at me with that tone. Okay, it's in a new age. And the old age is gone. The old age was an age of war. And that's, of course, what I would almost go as far as to say was the church's biggest mistake. But yet it was where the church learned how not to do things. Because we have understood over the last 500 years that as we come against Satan in the way that we have, we have always constantly been under attack. And the Bible doesn't say that the gates of the church will not prevail. It actually says the gates of hell will not prevail. But the way we've done warfare has gotten us to the place where Satan was always one step ahead, always coming against the church. There's always some disease or sickness that overshadows the body of Christ. Uh, we were basically the sick and the dying. Now you can say, well, that's not true because, yes, there's ministries out there that operates in true fire. There's churches that's doing things that, that we can't even begin to fathom or understand. And, yes, there's a group of people that operates at a different level. But I'm talking an average that's what we've noticed. Even in personal lives, the intercessors, the men and women that's in the front line, how they get beaten up by demonic entities, by their families getting divided, a divorce coming against the great men of God, um, adultery, just things that we should not operate in or get ourselves into will, of course, happen because of the way we did war. Now, over the next couple of months, I'm going to be teaching you about the courts. I'm going to be teaching you the courts of heaven how they operate, what they're there for, the mobile court, and how it works. It's a different way of war. It's a higher dimension of truth. That's part of the things. But you have to understand the kingdoms that the Father wants you to have uh, and understand. He wants you to live out of a specific kingdom. He wants you to understand the dominion you have, and it all kind of flows into to each other. Are you guys okay? 
And it shall be, it's Isaiah 2, and it shall be in the last days, the mountain of Jehovah's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Now, this is not a natural place in the earth. I want you to have that in mind. And shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. So all nations can't flow into one mountain. In the natural. Right. It's called a collusion. <laughs> like, how are we? And many people shall go and say, Come and let us go to the mountain of Yahweh, Jehovah, to the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways. And we will walk in his path, the ancient paths, and from out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Jehovah from Jerusalem. Now there's 12 laws of, Je of, of Zion and there's 12 laws of Jerusalem which goes hand in hand with the 24 elders. It's all the things that takes place out of the kingdom of heaven. Okay? But you need to understand the Father's desire according to this scripture is that there, he's saying that there will be a company of hungry ones, people that will go behind the church on a Sunday, that will go behind the church on a Wednesday, or Monday, or a Tuesday or outreach on Saturday, that will begin to operate as spirit beings from out of the kingdom of heaven Amen. and go into the mountain of the Lord, which is Mount Zion. They will operate from out of a place where His presence resonates and where I abide in Him. Where when I speak, I speak as an oracle of that which He would speak if He was in and through me. It's a different dimension of what we've been used to. And so the Father is calling forth a people that will understand this and understand, well, unfortunately, I can't go read this in Moses 19, 17. It's not there. The Father will never overshadow His Word, but He will overshadow your perception of His Word. He will take what you know and shatter it into little pieces. Because I remind you that what we know was given and taught to us by man. And what they know, and the reason they're teaching you the way they taught, was because they were taught by a man. Right. And so forth, and so forth. Right. Now, Yeshua, being a rabbi, and I, I've said this many times in my ministry, he was not a carpenter. If you still believe that Jesus wasn't car a carpenter, then you need to change your theology. Okay, because a carpenter does not wear a robe worth 45,000 Gs. Okay, a rabbi does. Okay, so he's a qualified rabbi, but because he was not your average rabbi, he had his own yoke. Now that means that he didn't have to teach what his rabbi taught him. Right. He could take his perception and understanding of what he was taught and teach his disciples that. So it would be a different way of teaching. And the reason that he was a rabbi with authority was because at his baptism, and it wasn't a weird thing, everybody got baptized in those days. But at his baptism, there was two witnesses. And if there's two witnesses at your baptism, you become a rabbi with authority. So Yeshua had John the Baptist come and testify for his, his presence. Then he, they had the voice that comes out of the sky. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Right? So that made him a rabbi with authority. In any given time, there would be a minimum of three rabbis in any given city or nation. And Yeshua was one of them. Are you guys okay? Mm -hmm. Now I need you to understand, his desire for me is to know who he is and who I'm called to be. I'm called to be of a higher standard than what I was taught to be. So Yeshua, having his own yoke, means that he teaches me at a level that man cannot teach. Right. And of course man can teach this, but when I'm in him, Closed in Him, when I live through Him and I understand that He doesn't die for me, He died as me, and now I live as Him, I step into Him and His voice becomes my voice. Because we don't understand what it means when I become one with Him. When I become one with something, um, none of me is left. As a matter of fact, it is like, um, it's like the word bap bap baptize. In the, in the Greek it means it's baptizo. And I've always used this example, it's taking an Oreo cookie and milk. Milk. <laughs> Sorry. When I leave the Oreo cookie in my milk, 
for too long, what happens? I change the substance of both. Yeah. It's no longer milk and it's no longer an Oreo cookie. It's some other type of mush that is delicious. <laughs> but I've changed, I've changed the substance of both into something new. So when a son or a daughter becomes one with Yeshua, I need you to understand that this is substance that is changing. His substance changed because what came out of him has come back in. Um, what, what I came out of, I went back into, which means what was missing is no longer missing. So the new creation begins as he's destined and desired for it to be from the very beginning that you've given your life to Yeshua. Now, I want to tell you that the original does not say, I'm born again. Born again is just something we made up that came from our translation. So, in essence, what we believe is that when I get born again, I'm a baby. Now, your spirit's not a baby. Your spirit's ancient. As a matter of fact, the other day, I, was, uh, I teach this all the time, and I was speaking to a lady, and my, this is what I do, I've always done, and I say, good evening, young lady, or young man. And she's like, you know, maybe you shouldn't say that. Maybe you should call us ancient ones. I said, well, I can get slapped for that. <laughs> you know, it depends on who I'm speaking to. So I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to do that. But we are ancient ones. I remind you that Yeshua said, we always said, let us create man. He didn't say, let us create Adam. Mm -hmm. He said, let us create man. So once he said that, I became a created being. And I started living in the kingdom of heaven. Matter of fact, by the time it was my, my day to be sent into my mother's womb, he read my scroll. And my scroll is what I agreed to before I was sent into the womb. I would not be sent to the womb unless I agreed to what I'm to do in the earth. That's why I have to get my spirit reactivated through my soul making a choice to accept Yeshua. Once that happens, my spirit's activated and I'm born from above. That's where I begin to see again. That's why the key to being born again is sight. Right? Once I'm born again, I can see. Now, if you're born again and you can't see, you need to get born again. Okay, but in the same breath, if no one's ever taught you to see, you won't be able to see. So maybe you are born again, but you just can't see. Because no one's ever teached you how to see. Now, if you've ever had a baby, when a baby comes out of his mother's womb, it sounds so beautiful. But it, it's not. It's nasty. What it does is that it will stare. Seriously? <laughs> My phone's ringing. I don't know what to do. Start crying. Okay, they stop. Don't do that. <laughs> the baby would, would, would stare. And I don't know if you remember that. I mean, I, I have a three-year-old, and I can remember how he comes out of the womb, and he would just stare. And, of course, he can only see, like, maybe five or six inches. Basically, from the mother's breast to her, to her face. That's the distance that he could see. And um, what he does is he's framing what he's looking at. And that's something we haven't done. Because we were told from the very beginning that your imagination is evil. All imaginations are demonic. <laughs> Maybe you weren't taught that, but that's something that we subconsciously have been believed. As a matter of fact, when you were a little kid, you had a vivid imagination, and so as time went on, you were told to stop that. If you had an a, 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 a imaginary friend, you were told to stop having that. You need to get rid of that. It's time to be serious. You can't have daydreams and do all these things. So as time goes on, we kind of shut down from using our imagination. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. You guys still alive and kicking? Yeah. Okay. Let me read something quickly if I can find it. Hello, we... For our weapons uh, of our warfare are not, not, not uh, fleshly, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down imaginations and every high thing. See, that's the problem. It says pulling down imaginations. So in, in reality, this is the modern King James. If I go to the King James Bible, the King James will tell me... Oh, that's a terrible one. If I go to King James, it will say... Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. But if you study this in a Bible study, it will come to the conclusion that all imaginations are evil. Right. Now, if I have the mind of Christ, now my soul is my will, mind, and emotion. So if I have the mind of Christ through my born from above experience, then the way I think has changed. 
You guys understand that? Yeah. Yeah. Then his desire for me is to begin to see, because what stops me from going into the spirit is what my soul believes. Right, so my imagination becomes key to understanding. And the Bible tells us that uh, it is the uh, enlightenment of my understanding. Now the enlightenment of my understanding is the sight of my soul. Because when light comes into my understanding, and understanding works through your soul, your will, mind, and emotion, then I begin to see what my spirit's doing. Because if you're born again, your spirit's desire is immediately and instantly to be with the king. I came out of him, my spirit just wants to be with him. My soul has no understanding of this. That's why there's this massive fight between soul and spirit all the time. It's I, I, I'm up and down, up and down in my faith. I love you, Yeshua. Oh my goodness, I don't know what this is ridiculous. I struggle to pray, I pray, nothing gets answered. It's like God doesn't love me. He, you know, I was going to sit in the garden and eat worms. <laughs> and then, well, oh, I love you, Jesus. You're so wonderful. You're so powerful. You know, and that's just the up and downs that we go through. But when you divide soul and spirit, there's a, a, a twist, a, a shift that takes place. The Bible tells us, and I don't want to get into it now, but the Bible tells us in Hebrews 4, 12, that we have to divide soul and spirit with a word. So if I have to divide something, it's because it's one, and it shouldn't be. And I need to begin to understand that when I live and operate out of the kingdom that he has called and destined me to operate out of, the idea is to reflect that kingdom into the earth. That's what Yeshua came to do. Right. So, in the very beginning, let's quickly maybe turn there. Then I'll go there myself, don't worry about it. <laughs> Well, Genesis 1, 26. It tells us that uh, God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let uh, him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over all cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing creep that, that creeps on the earth. So He's giving us authority over everything that He created. And his desire for you is to understand that. And of course, I get restored through the blood of the Lamb. But the blood of the Lamb does not restore the earth. How many of you know that? If that was so, then the earth would have been restored. Then there wouldn't be scriptures in the Bible that tells us that the creation is waiting for the sons of God to be manifested. Yeah. Amen. Right, so it's waiting for us to wake ye up ye. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> So once we begin to understand what the blood did for me, and I understand my responsibility to this kingdom. Now the kingdom of earth is the kingdom that we live on. It's the kingdom that the Father gave to me. So the Father creates the heavens and the earth. He creates this planet for us. And after He creates it, He says, Now I want you to take it. I give you full dominion over it. I give you full authority over it. And I want you to run it. And then, of course, we make a big mess. We get skinned, and we no longer have access to the kingdom of heaven. So we get recreated through what we perceive, see, touch, feel in the earth. We're born into sin, and therefore we perceive things, things through that eye. Right. So now what we have done is everything we don't occupy, we've literally given over to Satan. Mm -hmm. right. Right? So everything we don't occupy, everything we don't take, belongs to Satan. But it doesn't really belong to him. He's just taken it because no one occupied it. Right, right. So there's no kingdom of darkness. Did you know that? Right. We have confessed that. We have believed that for so many years that we've given Satan full authority to run this earth in whichever manner or way that he wants to. Because we've given him the authority by saying he's got a kingdom. Right. But it is not a kingdom. It's not the kingdom of darkness. It's a kingdom in darkness. And it's in darkness because the ecclesia, the ones with dominion and authority, hasn't taken back which belongs to us. Hasn't aligned through the restoration and the legislation of what the kingdom of heaven is meant to bring into the earth. We haven't done it because we didn't know we could. Right. So we haven't taken what's ours back. Then as I get born again, born from above, I have the ability to now see what needs to be aligned through the eyes of Yeshua. Because I, I'm born again into Him. I'm closed back into the light. Now I remind you that when Adam and Eve ate of the, the, the tree of good and evil, when they ate, when they traded with the enemy, when they made that trade, a DNA trade, what happened is they, they, the, the covering that they were under, they stepped out of. 
Then what they did is they took fig leaves and they covered their nakedness. Now, let me remind you of something. While they were in Eden, Yahweh told them to go multiply. Did you know that? So if you don't know that, go reach your Bible. So they were told to go multiply, so he wasn't talking about physical nakedness. And I remind you that their spirit was over their soul and their body. Their soul and their body was inside of their spirit. It's different than what ours is. But yet, they weren't, they, were, they weren't naked because they didn't have any clothes on. They were naked because the light they lived in, the covering of Yahweh was no longer there. And so they took the fig leaves. And that's why before Yahweh, Yeshua got crucified, He went up to the fig tree that was not even in season, wasn't meant to uh, bear any fruit at that time, and said to Him, well, this is your last. Why? Because He knew what He was about to do was to restore the covering to man through His death and resurrection on the cross. So He was going back to the beginning looking at the fig tree saying, I remember when they used you to clothe them, to cover themselves after they sinned. So I'm going to now restore them through the cross to get that light to cover them again so they have access beyond the two angels and the fiery sword that is against or in the way of the tree of life. So once we understand through our born-again experience that we have access into the heavens, for us to, to literally begin to understand what He has given me, I have to do two things. And we've done that. I have to give Him, because the kingdom of God, so we've done the kingdom of earth, the kingdom of God is inside of me. Right? That's what the Bible tells us. So what I need to do is after He's given me this, so I've got my own choices, he doesn't force me to do anything. So out of my own free will, I have to now do the same as what he did. I have to give him full dominion. I have to give him full authority of this kingdom. Because everything I experience in the beginning of my walk is, happens out of the kingdom of, of, of God. Happens on the inside of me, right? That's where I meet him. That's where I engage with him. That's where I start talking to him. And his desire then is for me to have my spirit sitting on the throne on the inside, consumed with Christ, overshadowing my soul and my body. Because my soul can no longer lead after I've made Lord, the Lord my, my, uh, my Lord. I've given him full dominion and full authority. My soul can no longer lead. It has to be subject to my spirit that's in Christ. And it has to overshadow my soul and my body. Because my soul is uh, as a glitch in its download. It's formed, trained, and equipped through, through sin. Right, yeah. my, my mom and my dad, all, as awesome as what they were, they, they formed me and shaped me. My teachers, my friends, television, the things I did, the things I've seen, the things I walked in, things I understood, my own uh, uh, trials and tribulations, my all, all, own things that bound me and kept me back formed me. So by the time I get uh, that born again experience, that born from above experience, I am misformed. <laughs> and I don't work so well. And my spirit goes, oh, what are we going to do with this idiot? Maybe, maybe that's not what your spirit said, but mine went, oh, I don't know how we can ever get this thing cleaned. But then of course we go through the process. And when I've done that, when I've given him, my being over to him as Lord, I begin to understand through the, the, the understanding of the blood and what the blood did, the restoration that came through Yeshua and what He did on the cross. The understanding that He has opened up and torn the veil. Now, I want you to understand that high priest could go beyond the veil. And it was a freaky time. It was not an exciting time for Him. It takes a three months, maybe six months of the year where He has to prepare. He has to prepare Himself because if there's one ounce of sin, uh, thou shallest die. Right? He had uh, bells at the bottom of his robe. So when he walks, it'll make it like a sound. He had a rope tied to his leg. This is not an exciting time. <laughs> right? <laughs> and so when he goes into the Holy of Holies to present himself to the Father, so that the judgment of the Father can go through him, a sinless being, into the nation, if he had sinned, he drops dead. And the nation uh, has a problem. No atonement made. Right. So we need to understand what the Father wants us to step into. He wants you to understand what was torn open. Because now you don't need uh, to walk or to go in there sinless. 
Here you go in through Yeshua, and all of a sudden I have access into the Holy of Holies. Mm. I have access beyond the point where um, most could go. Matter of fact, the way you go in there is through relationship and intimacy. And because I'm now born again, I have relationship and intimacy, and I can go in, it changes everything. But I don't just go in to where my, my, my natural takes me. I go into the kingdom of heaven. Now, I want to say something, and I want you to understand it. Paul makes a statement and said, I was caught up. Or he says, I knew a man. He speaks in the third person. Thank you, hello. <laughs> who, who does that? That's serious. <laughs> I love Paul, he's awesome. But he speaks in the third person, but he's talking about himself. And he says, I was caught up into the third heaven. Now, our Greek mindset immediately tells us in the natural that, well, if there's a three, there has to be a two. And if there's a two, there has to be a one. So what we made of that through what Daniel experienced is we said, oh, okay, I understand. Because Daniel had to fight, uh, or there was demonic entities that were fighting against the message that was sent from Yahweh to Daniel. They had this massive fight. Um, that there, This is how it works. You have the first kingdom, which is the earth. You have the second kingdom, which is above the first, which is the demonic realm. Do you guys don't have that theology? <laughs> yes, you do. No? Yeah. Oh. Any response will help me right now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> have you ever seen a rabbit that runs across the road and your bright hits his, his face? He stops and just stares at you. <laughs> and then you go, <laughs> X rabbit. That's what I'm looking at right now. Uh, any response is going to help me. <laughs> what was I saying? Second. Second. Okay, so we've believed that the second heaven is a demonic realm, that we have to break through to get to the third realm, right? Now, if that's true, then the Bible is lying to us, because it tells me that, the, that, that Satan is under my feet. Right, so his residence is under my feet, and what he has right to is my toe jam. That's it. The Bible tells me that he's my footstool. Now, stool has many different meanings. One of the meanings is toe jam. Right? Because stool is poop. That's not what it means, but that's what I get from it. And the only nasty stuff that comes out of an athlete's foot is toe jam. So I, that's what he is. He's foot poop. And we need to understand that, because if I make him to be above me, then he overshadows me. Then I have to look up to him to get to my father. Then I have to understand him, and he has to overshadow me. So that makes him greater than me, but he's not. I remind you that I'm made of three strands. That's body, soul, spirit. I change, DNA alignment changes me when I get born again. That's why an ungenerated man, which is an unborn again, being, being a, a, a Philistine, <laughs> right, <laughs> it has two strands. And even the angels are over them. Right. But a born again being is a different creation. It has three strands, body, soul, spirit, and is over the angels. Yeah. Right. So Satan cannot have the second heaven. Come on. And we have to understand that, of course... Paul was not Greek. The ones who interpreted the Bible was Greek. Paul was a Hebrew. Now that doesn't mean that he made coffee for his wife. He was a Hebrew scholar and a highly favorite scholar by that. And so when he says, I was taken up into the third heaven, he's talking about the number three in Hebrew, which is Gimel. And Gimel means the full supply. So he was saying I was caught up into the full supply of heaven. Wow. <clears throat> that kind of changes everything because he, there's no second heaven for me to go into. But I have to believe that and understand that. So when I understand that the third heaven is the full supply that I get caught up into, but again, my perception of heaven, because we have um, the ground, then we have the sky, and then we have the heaven. That's just our perception. We've got the blue clouds, which is the heaven, and the white clouds that represents the sky. But beyond the white sky, our, rep our understanding is heaven. So it's up there, it's out there. I have to go out of the atmosphere to get there. But the Bible tells us the kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
So the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, then when I put my hand to my face, just before <laughs> yeah. I touch it, I feel the heat of my hand. Right. That means that's where the kingdom of heaven is. Right. So it's not a place I go to, it's a place I shift into. Right. Yeah. That's why I need to be aware of my spirit. I need to know who and what my spirit is and what my spirit can do. And of course, once I have this revelation, the desire of the Father is for me to live and move and have my being in Him. Have you ever thought what that scripture means? You know, he goes as far as to say, you can only worship me in the spirit. So where have we been worshiping Him? Not in the spirit, because we don't understand what it means. Because we don't have ourselves being a spirit being. I'm a human being that operates in my soul that comes to church to receive a message, not to be the message. We come to receive instead of to give. We come here empty to get filled up instead of to come here filled and to bless those around us. So we need to begin to understand who I am as a being consumed with His glory. One who can operate in the kingdom of heaven, out of the kingdom of heaven, and legislate that which I see there. Because Jesus comes out of the kingdom of heaven with full revelation and understanding what it's all about. So he looks at sickness and he says, hmm, well I don't see that where I live. As a matter of fact, I've never seen that in my entire life. As a matter of fact, where I come from, there's none like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to legislate the heavens into you, and then it, it has to align with what is the reality. So his way of healing was different than ours. As a matter of fact, I want to go as far as to tell you this, and you might not believe me, but it's the fact. Yeshua did not operate in the gifts at all in any way, fashion, or form. Right. Now, we don't understand that because he did uh, words of wisdom. Matter of fact, he looked at his disciple and said, Oh, when you were by the tree, I saw you there. Yeah. He read the thoughts of the, the Philistines, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. He did signs and wonders and miracles and did all the things that looked just like the gifts. But after he did all of that, he said to his disciples, I'm having to go and so that I can send you the Holy Spirit. Right. So the Holy Spirit wasn't there, which means the nine gifts wasn't available yet for Yeshua. Right. And by the way, he was a Hebrew. Right. Uh, it was a Jew. Right? right. Now we need to understand that when you live in the Spirit, that's why he said things like, uh, I only do what I see my father do. So where did he see his father? Well, we believe that you can't see God. Matter of fact, we believe that if you see God, you die. But yet, if you read the story of Moses, he spent 40 days, what, looking at the back of God? No, we, we didn't understand what the father was saying. Because he goes into the kingdom of heaven, spends 40 days, the first 40 days, then he spends another 40 days. After the first 40 days, he comes down, lightning and fire coming out of his head. His face changed, ox, eagle, lion, man. Why? Because you become what you behold. He burns with, with a Fahrenheit that we can't even express or understand. So much that he smashes the golden cow into powder. Uh, oh, as far as I understand, you need to burn at at least 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit to get gold to powder. So that's what he looked like when he came down. Right. Now when, he, you know, when the father said, you can never know me face to face. If you study that, that saying in the Hebrew culture, it means you will never know me before time was time. Because then Moses uh, 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 makes a tent within the, the community and he would spend time within the tent where the father would come and have him spend time with him face to face. Yeah. Then he would leave and who would stay behind? Joshua would want to spend that face-to-face -face time. So, so what we've believed up to this point was just absolute rubbish. It's the flesh and the soul taking over the spirit, saying, well, you can't see God. So it's all by faith. And it's great. But I've been taught all my life that I can only hear His voice. Right. That's a very distant God. Right. And we've had awesome relationships and we've seen great visions and encounters and had all kinds of stuff but now with this revelation all of a sudden I know my daddy face to face. Yeah. I spend intimate time with him every day. As a matter of fact I have lost count on the amount of times that I've been in heaven. Yeah. And as a matter of fact with the understanding that, kingdom, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand I'm in heaven right now. 
And although you don't understand it yet, within the next couple of weeks, my desire is for you to begin to live in that kingdom. To begin to understand what I legislate into the earth. When I live in the spirit, everything changes. As a matter of fact, let me tell you something. In the spirit, all things are exposed. So I don't prophesy anymore. I only say what I see in the spirit. That's a whole different ballgame. Now, I'm not saying that the gifts are nullified. Because the gifts are for a level that you're at. But we cannot make the gifts everything because the Bible tells us that the gifts were given as a measure. Or did I not read it right? It was given as a measure. Which means there's more than what was given. And I remind you that John, Paul, Peter, these guys, they are awesome. But they're not my example. You know, Paul says something. He says, although I speak in tongues... And my understanding is unfruitful. Well, thank God my example is not Paul. Because the higher dimension of truth is that my soul being transformed, and now I have the mind of Christ, can understand when I speak in tongues. Because I can't believe all the time that when I speak in tongues it's unfruitful. Because then I have separated my, my soul from my, from my, from my um, spirit in a whole different way. I've made my, sp- my soul nothing and my spirit everything. But my soul wants to know. Matter of fact, my soul, like Enoch, wants to go into the kingdom of heaven with my spirit. My body wants to go into the kingdom of heaven with my spirit. And of course, that is what the Father desires for all of us. To get to that level where my being is glorified and I operate uh, fully in that kingdom. Now I want to tell you, and I'm going to try and close with this. There is people within the nation of, our, of this earth that's already doing this. More than what you can even begin to think. There's people appearing and disappearing all over the nation. Um, uh, conferences set up by angels. Arranged by angels. And then in dreams relate to the pastors and the men and the women and the preachers that's supposed to be there to receive the word that comes directly from Zion to the people, the ecclesia, to be trained and equipped and sent. How are you guys doing? Great. So my desire for tonight is that you begin to understand that your, your imagination is the key to your sight. Where do you see? You see it in your mind. Right? That's where you see. So Whatever you're looking at, in, in reality, you're using your imagination. Now, I hate the word imagination because it's, it's a very young word and it's a stupid word. <laughs> Isn't that stupid? I can't say imagination in any other way but to have myself think I've made it up. Right, right, right. But it's the enlightenment of my understanding. If there's a word for that, it would be a much better word than imagination. But it is the enlightenment of my understanding. So it is the light that protrudes from the kingdom of heaven into my mind, my soul, to have me see through what happens on the inside of my brain so that I can relate to what my spirit's doing. For example, I will have an encounter with Yeshua where my mind starts going on a journey where I find myself uh, sitting at the gym. I was actually physically in the gym. Can you believe it? (laughs) Now I'm sitting at the gym and funny enough, I was on the preacher bench. Now, preach a bench is to train your biceps, your arms. And I'm sitting there, and while I'm taking a break, my, my, my spirit's taken up into the heavens. But what my soul is busy doing is it's busy making up a story. So I'm engaging, and I find myself on a, a big, massive open plain where the, the, the floor is marble, light gray and white, and there's a blue flame burning on it. Now, I don't know how to make this stuff up, but this is what I'm thinking while I'm seeing it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it, and then I see it. And I kept on going, and, and I realized I was kind of afraid to step onto this floor of fire. So I didn't really want to, but my spirit was overshadowing my soul in the way I think, so it just wanted to go. So as I walked onto the floor, I walked a little bit closer. I began to see some other things. I see the Father sitting on His throne. I see the fullness of Yahweh. I see the 24 elders. Now, I didn't see all of that in the beginning. As I kept on going into the engagement, I began to see everything else. I saw the Father, and I saw the floor, and it freaked me out. Because I was told, if you see the Father, you're going to die. So I made a quick decision in my heart, well, I'd rather die than not see him. Right? So as I step onto the floor, my body starts burning. My spirit being starts burning. Now, my immediate thought is, okay, I'm dying. But I began to realize it's not a consuming fire. It's kind of that relates to who my spirit is. My spirit's fire. 
And as I begin to walk closer to the Father, I see that right in the middle is this massive pond, and within the pond is, is fish and creatures that I can't even express or explain. There's diamonds and rubies and all kinds of beautiful stones of great value, but there's also things in that I have never seen. I couldn't engage it because I didn't know what it was. It was a mystery to me. And I went on and I stood before the Father, and, and the reason I was there was because that he, was going, he wanted to give me something that I asked for within the week. And so as he did that, uh, I remember um, afterwards, he had anointed me with a sword. The sword went back into him, which I then I later realized was Yeshua. I, um, uh, I, uh, afterwards, everything was finished. He gave me a hug. Once he hugged me, I went into him. And when I was in him, it was literally the first time I could ever breathe. That's what it felt like. And it all happens in my mind. It all happened in my mind. And after I was spending time inside of him, I realized there's his kingdoms. There's all kinds of things inside of him because he's a multitude of a God that we can't begin to fathom in the natural understand. Even in the spiritual, he's only revealing small portions of who he is to us. And um, that was a journey that I went on and I had to engage many times to get the full picture. But I'm sitting in my friend's house after I shared this with him and he says, okay, this is freaking me out. Because just yesterday, I got a text from a friend of mine that went into the spirit and this is what she said. And she, to the T... Ex described what she saw in the throne room exactly the same as what I did. Wow. Exactly the same. So you can't make this stuff up. Especially not when you're in Christ. And of course, the key of everything I teach is in Christ. I can't do or see or explain or express or teach any of this unless I'm in Christ. And I'm not going to tell you in Christ all the time. You need to know that that's the foundation. It's being in Christ through the blood of Yeshua, understanding that that's how everything opens up for me. Me living, moving, having my being in Him, He covers me as the light. And I operate and live in the heavens because I'm in Him. Right? How are you guys doing? Yes. Let's stand. So I need you to understand that your imagination is key. I need you to have revelation of the three kingdoms. And of course the third kingdom, or the kingdom uh, of heaven, is the Father's desire for us to operate from. Everything that happens in the earth happens first in the kingdom of heaven. Everything that happens inside here has to reflect itself from the kingdom of heaven into me. Are you guys okay? Mm -hmm. So the next couple of classes is going to take us on a journey where we begin to go into the kingdom of heaven and make that your actual residence. We divide soul and spirit, and you become aware of who your spirit being is. That's a shift in, well, I am no longer soul, I am now spirit. Matter of fact, the first time that happened to me, I remember my spirit popping out of my body, and as I was driving in the car, I could feel the wind blow on my spirit face. And from there, I had the journeys going into the heavens, getting to know my father at that level. It changes everything. And of course, the church has never taught that, because you can only teach what you know. And of course, we want to be safe. We want to hold on to what we know. We want to hold on to the foundations. And we never go beyond the foundation. The point of foundation is that you build on it. So I know that your spirit wants this. And I also know that your soul wants scriptures, wants to understand this, wants to have everything put into little books so you can go study it. But I need you to engage it. I want you to listen to the message again and again and again until you perceive it slightly more. And then you constantly want to engage it. You want to go and see it. You want to use your imagination. Let it grow. Let it mature. If it doesn't, if it doesn't flow with your theology, remind yourself that God is not in a box. God's not contained in one book. Amen. He made a statement and said that only the things that I've done, <laughs> the things that I've done, cannot be written down. If it is written down, it will fill all the libraries of the world. Yeah. And we want to contain our God to one book. Right. Now, I'm not saying that our one book is not valuable. It is the most valuable book. It is about that which holds everything together. But we have to understand that within what we know of it, there's more mysteries. Our Father is a mysterious God. And He opens up secrets to those who go deeper into Him. Amen. Okay, the back of our God is the mysteries and mysterion of who he is, the secrets that he wants to reveal. That's why he wants us to go into him. Let's pray. Father, as we come before your throne right now, Lord, I ask that you'll begin to open up the hearts of everyone in this room. I know that what was said was exciting, and I know that we want it so badly in our spirit, but yet our theology could come against our perception of certain things. We could be afraid because this might be deception. This might not be the truth. I might do something and Satan comes in or Satan directs me, but that's why I'm in Christ. 
So I pray, Father, that you will begin to align your people with you. You will begin to propel them deeper into your heartbeat. And let us, as the Ecclesia, begin to walk in this, in the fullness of it. The capacity meant for this time and season to be poured in and for us to be aligned in our righteousness and for us to understand what it means to be justified, what it means to be completely restored back into Christ, back into the fullness of the image of Yahweh and to operate in that power, to understand legislation and to begin to dominate and have dominion over the earth as we were created to have. Father, I pray for revelation in this week. I pray for your people to open up their hearts. I ask, Lord, that you will bless everyone in this room with favor. Uh, bless everyone with everything they do. And may we go deeper and deeper into intimacy with you. Father, we love you. We praise you. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. Amen.